December 2012, I was terminated from my job. I was working at a local beauty supply store in Augusta, Georgia. So I did like the average person did. I started looking for different jobs in the area and I actually had a few interviews, but I wasn't landing a job. So I had to go back to what I know and it was hair. I've been doing hair all of my life. So I had got on my Facebook page, hey, I'm doing this kind of sewing. Hey, you can get $5 off. I was just trying to just get somebody in my chair. And so eventually I made the announcement that I was selling hair. And once I made that announcement, I posted a picture of me with this long 24 inch wig. Everything just kind of went out like wildfire. Everybody knew what Cola was doing here, Cola was selling here. And I realized within the first two months, I made more money within those first two months than I did the previous year at my old job. So that excitement fueled me to building my brand and making perfect distraction what it is today. Opening my hair salon has been a very interesting process. And to say the least, I would not change anything that I experienced and or went through because the experience really truly built me and mold me and to become even a better woman, even a better entrepreneur. And I really, really, really appreciate being able to sit in my salon right now to even give y'all a little insight on everything that I went through. So let's just get into it. <laughs> the whole process of me opening my hair salon back all the way in 2016. So uh, fall of 2016 is when I first took the initiative to start looking for a salon at home. And me being me, never purchased anything big or even purchased like a home or anything property wise. It was just kind of like, Oh, I think I could probably do this myself. So I drove around. I had, I originally wanted a salon in Camp Creek, Georgia. So I went out there, I looked at the available spaces, I called the phone numbers that were on the door, and I just, the people weren't taking me as serious. I was like, well, maybe I need to get a real estate agent. So the process of me finding a real estate agent really wasn't hard. Um, however, when I did find found a re real estate agent, everything just became so much easier. I was like, this whole time I'm over here driving around looking for places, trying to call and make deals, not knowing nothing of what I was talking about. So finding a real estate agent was very helpful. Um, my real estate agent ended up finding me different locations. Um, she wanted to know like, hey, where would you like to be located? I told her a couple of different areas. And she sent me, y'all, over 20 different available locations. Me being me, I drove to everyone. That was like my homework to drive to see if I liked the locations. I was gonna do it regardless because location is very important. The um, demographics is very important. Just how many people are in that location is very important. So of course, I drove around, I looked at the locations. And like out of over 20 places, y'all, I really didn't like nothing but one. <laughs> one. And the one location that I happened to like happened to be in Sandy Springs, Georgia, which is the place that I've been living at ever since I moved to Atlanta. So I was like, okay, I guess I probably can do a salon in Sandy Springs. So this particular location, we filled out the application to go with it. Everything didn't go as planned. I remember when I was in college, someone asked me, Ricola, what do you plan on doing after you graduate college? I told them, I'm gonna go to cosmetology school. <laughs> you know what they told me? You're gonna waste your degree on, on going to cosmetology school? <laughs> I find that very funny because that, that conversation replays in my head all the time. And I've made more money doing hair than I ever would have did working in somebody's cubicle, working in somebody else's office, living somebody else's dream, making somebody else's dream come a reality because I chose to live my own dream. And I feel like if there's there are goals and dreams and aspirations that you want to do in life, you should pursue those goals. You should pursue those dreams because you never know where it can lead you. Never let somebody who didn't live their dreams talk you out of living your own dreams. It's two o'clock in the morning, Friday 9th, 2014. 
actually graduate in 12 hours, but I had to come ship some hair to my brats, of course. So now I'm about to go home and go to sleep so I can wake up for my big day. So crazy how I actually found this location. So the reason or the way that I found this location is because I used to work at my the very first salon I worked at. The owner, which is a good friend of mine, she she hit us up on like a Wednesday and she told all of her stylists, she was like, hey y'all, I really appreciate y'all working at my salon, but by Saturday, all of your stuff have to be packed. I've sold the salon. I'm like, what? What? You done sold a salon? You just telling me on a Wednesday night? I gotta be gone by Saturday? And then I already had appointments and everything like for the following week. So I'm like, okay, me, B&B, &B, okay. Well, ASAP, I gotta go find another salon to work in. So since I lived in Sandy Springs, I was like, well, let's just go ahead and look at some salons close by because at this time, the salon I was working at was in Smyrna. Georgia. So I was like, let me just look at some places in Sandy Springs. So I literally drove around to every, everywhere that said hair salon or anything like that. I drove to it trying to say, hey, are y'all hiring for stylists? Hey, do y'all have a booth around? Like, I was just trying to find a salon to work in because I definitely wasn't trying to go back to my house. Eh, 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 wasn't an option. So this location where I'm sitting at right now, I happened to come and I noticed it was empty. I was like, they gone. Now just like two weeks prior, I kid y'all not, the people was in here working and everything. So for me to see it like two weeks later, not even really looking for a location, just looking for somewhere to work at, and it was empty. Y'all, I ran and got my phone real quick. I called my realtor. I was like, hey, there's this location. It's 8540 Roswell Road. Um, the number is, I gave them the number to like the little sign we had for the real estate agent. Y'all, I was so excited. I just needed my realtor to contact them ASAP. I said, it's available. Can you go ahead and call them and see if we can schedule a walkthrough? Y'all, I was ecstatic, excited. I could have started twerking. <laughs> I could have started twerking while I was on the phone. My realist guy was so excited. But at the same time, I tried not to get my hopes too high because I didn't want to get let down. But actually, this process was so smooth getting approved for the location. Um, it was so smooth, like it was a smooth transaction. It actually went smoother than I expected. I was like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> so then they was like, you know, come in, sign a lease for your salon. I'm like, okay, it's getting official. I'm about to sign a lease. So I signed a lease for the salon. And then the next day they gave me the keys. I'm like, oh yeah, it's official. I feel like DJ Kelly, I got the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys. I was like, <laughs> excited through the roof excited like whew, whew, nigga we made it excited like I was excited y'all so then that process came and y'all by the time I had signed the actual lease for my salon I had already found a contractor because I, I was on top of it I had already contacted like three or four different contractors had already got quotes I was like okay yes this fit into my budget this is what I'm gonna do I found the contractor that I really wanted to go with he was Prompt, he was professional, he responded back quickly, but then we ran into an issue. So, uh, even though I told him my budget up front, like, hey, this is how much I'm spending, this is how much I have to go towards the salon, and he was like, okay. So, we ended up getting like the blueprints done, we ended up getting the MEP work done, we ended up getting a lot of work done paper wise. So, I did get like my salon layout completed with this particular contractor. At this particular time, like three months was going by, I had still not got an exact quote of how much he was gonna charge me for the build out of my salon because with this salon, it's completely different from how it was when I first saw it. I wanted it how I wanted it and I wanted it, okay? I didn't want all, I did not want it the salon how it previously looked. Had I got any space, I wouldn't, wouldn't have wanted how it previously looked. I wanted it how I wanted it to look. So, almost three months has passed by, and then he dropped the, um, the quote on how much he gonna charge. I looked at that quote. <laughs> I thought he, I was being pumped. 
Hey, and where you at? <laughs> Cause I know I'm on pump. <laughs> Cause clearly I sold this man one price and he that overly doubled my price. Nah, this can't be right. Nah, nah. Nah, player partner. Um, this can't be right. Cause I told you my price and clearly I'm this is over the budget. <laughs> Way over the budget. Like you're charging me over two times the amount that I were, was willing to spend on the salon space. Like, nah, bro. You should have told me this three months ago. I could have found another contractor. So, at the last minute, I had to let him go. And I had to find another contractor. Now, this contractor was definitely more in my budget. And so with that process, I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> we got we got started. Like he got started right away. I gave him my first deposit. He got started right away. We like tearing stuff up, the demolishing part. Like I was like, okay, we got some progress. The floors up, the walls torn down, and then boom. Well, like a month in, we got a visit by the city of Santa Springs. They put this big orange sign on my door. Y'all, I should have took a picture, but I was so embarrassed. Like, I really wanted to take it off, but I couldn't. <laughs> I really should have took a picture so I could show y'all. It was a big orange sign. It was a work stop order. We ended up getting a work stop order because all the permits that were needed for the build out weren't, wasn't pulled. So that ended up putting me behind a, an additional two months. So this happened at the end of September, September, and we didn't start back working because we didn't get all the completed permits until the end of November. So it gave me like even more downtime. So at this time, we're months in it and I'm paying rent and everything and I'm not even in there. I'm paying salon rent, I'm paying booth rent, I'm paying rent at my house, I'm paying, I'm paying all this, all this money, and I'm, I'm not in my salon, so I was just, I, I kind, I kind of got into like a negative space. I was just like, oh my god, why is all this happening to me? Like, oh my goodness. Like I said, I'm just so used to stuff happening easier than it did to the point that when this happened, I almost just wanted to just say, f it and give up. But like. The person in me, I'm not a, I'm not the person to give up easily. I'm not a, I don't believe in failing. Like, I just couldn't, I wanted it too bad to give up basically. Like, this is what I worked so hard for. And even though all this stuff was up against me, and it just seemed like the ball wasn't rolling, I was never gonna move into my salon. I was just like, I had to stay positive. I had to read self-help books. I had to listen to articles. I just had to stay motivated. I had to surround myself around people who was gonna build me up. I even lost friends through the process because it was just certain stuff that used to entertain me. I couldn't even entertain it anymore because I just wasn't in a place to hear what everybody else was going through in their life because I had my own stuff that I was going through in my life and I'm a very private person so even now to this day a lot of my friends don't know exactly what I went through with this process but the ones who do know it was just like okay they were so positive and they helped uplift me and because of them, I'm here now. And it was just like, you have to have positive people in your corner. And I just wasn't in the space to even talk to people on a regular how I used to. Because people were like, oh, I ain't heard from you in a while. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uplift myself right now. So I can't even uplift nobody else, <laughs> if that made sense. So I was just really in like a negative space because what I wanted so bad was taking like was like giving me jabs right and left. I get a right jab, I get a left jab, I'm like oh sh it was beating me up, literally. So I just really had to stay positive and just go through with the process and a year later, ha we here. It took a year y'all but throughout that year it really helped build me and mold me into the person I am today. Like I just love being in my salon. I love that I have breadologists who love working with me. Like, I appreciate them so much. And it's like, they be like, oh, I'm so glad I found you. I really love working here. But little do they know, like, I appreciate them probably more than they appreciate me because it's like, 
You just see your dream unfold in front of your eyes. And I remember the whole idea of like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna find stylists to work in my salon? Are people gonna wanna work at a new salon? Like, it was just so much going through my mind. And it was like, I found some people who actually enjoy working at my salon, who actually enjoy being here. And we get along, we like click so well, like we are really like, a family so it's just an awesome experience overall like this whole journey has been wonderful <laughs> now after all the tears has been cried after i've really had to talk myself into not giving up after i really had to be like cola you better than what you really think you are like i wouldn't change the experience at all because that experience built character it's just making me really go harder for what I know I deserve to have. And out today, it really means a lot to me. And it was very special to have my mama. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. And my mama to come with me because they are the two of them. I work so hard for you. Sorry, go on. It's the day I will always remember. It's the day that I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And I remember I had gave myself goals and plans on what I was going to do when I got here. And I said, I'm going to attend cosmetology school. I'm going to work a year in somebody else's salon. Then I'm going to own my own salon. So November of 2014, I enrolled in cosmetology school. A year later, October 2015, I was completely finished with cosmetology school. So I started working at someone, someone's salon in January of 2016. <laughs> and now it's 2017. And I'm able to see all of my plans, my goals, my determination unfold right in front of my eyes. And sometimes I can't even believe, like, I really did it. <laughs> Everything that I spoke into existence has came to life. Everything that I prayed about has come to life. Everything that I have ever wanted is just coming to life. Because I stay positive.